Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, September 20th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Uh, I was wondering if uh, any of you watched the president's speech yesterday at the United Nations. Um, I started watching it, and I just had to turn it off. I am totally repulsed from the truth that is being hidden under all these politicians. Um, and also that people don't see what I see. It's very isolating and um, I know there are some people out there who see it, but I mean, Donald Trump just set the stage, people, for a bomb to go off and destroy Manhattan. Come on, people. And, um, you know, it may not even be North Korea that does it. You know, it could be our own country. Don't forget, 9-11 was an inside job. Many of you don't believe that. But it was an inside job. Okay? If you look at the wife from Washington Square Park, those twin towers were positioned right under the Arch of Triumph. You could see it. If you look through the, the uh, Washington Square Park Arch, those two twin towers were directly in the center of that arch. And they, those people were sacrificed. They were sacrificed uh, to Baal. And um, then the world, one, one World Freedom Tower was built right in its place. All right. Do you know what that represents? Okay. That represents, you know, the good and the evil between man, the twins. One side is good. We have a good side and we have a bad side. It's like we have an evil twin. Okay, those two towers represented our duality DNA. Okay, and then when they destroyed that, they put up one. That means that that the the bad side has devoured the good side, and now uh, we come back stronger, right? Because now there's one tower in its place, and that tower is right underneath the arch. Okay, if you don't, if you're not spiritual, if you're secular, you're not going to see all this and you're not going to understand it. And when somebody comes out to give you a little golden nugget of truth, you get your head bit off. Okay, and most of the times people that bite your head off are people who d don't do anything with their lives. They just sit around and smoke pot and drink all day long and live the life of a teenager. Okay, never grow up, but they think they know it all. They're like blowhards. You know what a blowhard is? Okay, you got to stay away from those kinds of people because it's only the shaking of the earth that's going to wake those kinds of people up. When God shakes the ground beneath their house, okay, and they realize that they're not in control of their own life anymore. And a big, gigantic piece of concrete from the ceiling is about to go and crush their skull. Okay? Maybe, maybe they'll wake up. Okay? Um, this president has presented himself uh, to the biblical community as being the one who's going to fight for them. Okay? Now, we just got off of one who was rallying for the left, all right? So, you know, one may be on the left and one may be on the right, but they're all moving towards a one world order. I don't care what they are saying to you in their speeches or what they claim their intent is, they're still pushing the world towards the one world order, because America has to be divided, people. It has to come down because America, 
okay America was always the strongest nation and they can't bring the one world order into existence unless they bring America to its knees and they're doing that with uh, uh, weather control mind control propaganda all the news is fake you don't know what to believe the internet is all fake okay we don't know what's real and the boundaries are all blurred the boundaries everywhere are blurred and we don't know what is truth we, we can't tell truth from fiction but if you are in the body of Christ then you know the truth and if you claim to be in the body of Christ and you still speak out of both sides of your mouth then you might just be a fake fraudulent Christian there's a lot of them around and I'm not saying there isn't any hope for them there's always hope if God wants them and you could still be a Christian and walk in ignorance okay but at some point people you gotta wake up you've got to wake up you saw two major earthquakes yesterday in Mexico uh, Puerto Rico is getting ravaged again okay they, they set up 400 400 places for people to go to evacuate like FEMA centers I don't trust FEMA people when people go into these shelters they, people lose track of other people. They could just disappear and you don't know where they are. What about people that don't have a big family? How do we know they're returning, where they're going after their house gets destroyed from the hurricane? They could just disappear. We wouldn't even know it. Listen, those Walmarts that closed down, they all have barbed wire and security cameras around them. And there's underground transportation that was built under these FEMA camps just like in the days of the Nazi Germany when they pulled people from one area to the next right right there they're right near train stations they're right near bus stations they're near airports they're near wherever they need to be to transport people this has been planned for a very very long time and you know uh, people snub and make fun and, and mock and scoff people that know the truth and call them um, conspirators, okay? But where do you draw the line between conspiracy and truth? What about when conspiracy becomes truth? Then what do you do? We need to pray for the people that are asleep, okay? I'm not worried about myself because I know the truth. And I'll tell you honestly, if a nuke comes, I want to be at ground zero because I I know I'm going to shoot right out of here. Okay? Who wants to survive in a bunker? For what? What are you saving your life for? What do you think the earth is going to have to offer you after a nuclear blast? We have a nuclear winter here. Nothing's going to grow. No sunlight's going to come through. Everything's going to be poisoned and polluted except what you have stored in that box under the ground. Give me a break, people. What are you saving? Wake up. Okay, I have two devotionals for you today. But I'd like to say the Our Father. We need to say the Our Father. We need to pray for everyone who's asleep and has does not have a clue what is coming and the ones that are living in their sin. Because they're the ones that are really in danger. Okay, But we really can't do anything about it except just deliver the love of Jesus Christ and put out the gospel. The true saving gospel of Jesus Christ. So please join me. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day. Another day that we could serve you, Father, here in these end, end times. Uh, Father, I ask you to give us your protection, your peace. Let us exude your glory, uh, Lord, so that um, people will see you and people will understand that you are the light, that the, the lamp at, to their feet to show them the way out, Father. Father, we do this eagerly. In Jesus' name, bless you. Okay, this is called Early Warnings, and, and the reading is from Acts twenty four sixteen, And it says, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and men. In Iwa Beach, Hawaii, sits a rather plain-looking white block building with a small ramp leading to the front door. It is unimposing, but what happens within those walls could save thousands of lives. This building houses the Public Tsunami Warning Center, established in 1949. Its purpose is to continually monitor the Pacific Basin for seismic activity and provide early warning flashes for possible tsunamis. The human heart also has an early warning system established in the soul, which continually monitors for the seismic activities of sin in our lives, the conscience. The Apostle Paul's desire to serve Christ with a pure conscience. The Apostle Paul's desire was to serve Christ with a pure conscience conscience. You can read about that in 2 Timothy 1 3. And we should desire that too. One man quipped, conscience is that still small voice that is sometimes too loud for comfort. Are you listening to your conscience? The Bible warns that if we don't heed this still small inner voice, it may become seared and defiled. You can read about that in 1 Timothy 4.2 and Titus 1.15. When that happens, it's like disconnecting the sirens and signals from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. If your conscience is speaking to you about some matter, Hear it and heed it. And a French proverb, there is no pillow so soft as a clear conscience. So true. Amen. And this next one was called Dorcas. And it's from Acts 9, 36. Dorcas was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. If there were a race named Kindness Classic or Good Deeds Derby, Dorcas would have been the champion. She made garments for widows and sewed the buttons on many child's coat. When she died, the whole town turned out in grief, and someone sent for Peter. The Bible said, quote, Peter knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha which means Dorcas, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. You can read about that in Acts 9, 40. In 1982, Berkeley writer Anne Herbert wrote a simple sentence, quotes, practice random kindness, kindness and senseless acts of beauty, unquote. She wanted people to imagine what would happen if there were an outbreak of kindness in the world. If everybody did one kind thing on a daily basis, 
Now, there is an international movement wherein thousands of people commit random acts of kindness, such as seeking to adopt a stray animal, smiling at a bus driver, complimenting a stranger, returning shopping carts to the store, treating local police officers to a cup of coffee, and giving up their places in the grocery store line to someone with just one item. If anyone should be kind, it is the followers of Jesus Christ. Today, be a Dorcas and commit a random act of kindness. And William Wordsworth quotes, The best portion of a good man's life is his little, nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. How true. People only remember your faults. People only remember the mistakes you've made in life. That's what they think of when they hear your name. If they know you your whole life and they think of your name, they think of the, the mistakes that you've made. Imagine that, most people. Isn't that disgusting human condition? But it is what it is until we're out of here. So on that note, I'll wish you all a beautiful day in the Lord. Unlike others, I'm going to tell you that I love you and truly I love you to come on here every day and tell you the truth and how much I love you and how much Jesus loves you. I don't see others doing that. Not to boast, but uh, I want you to understand my heart, okay, if you can see it. God bless you, everyone. Have a beautiful day in the Lord.